Hi, my name is Adam Williams, and I'm the founder of Rust Belt Business Law. And one of the services that we provide is we help people buy and sell businesses. And during our initial meetings with clients and potential clients, they get really nervous and really intimidated by the process of selling their business. But I've got some good news for you. It's actually a pretty simple process. It's not completely overwhelming. And from a high level, I think I can explain it to you in a way that you'll understand really easily. The first step that you should take if you want to sell your business is actually a step that a lot of people skip over, and that's to get your business ready for sale. So just like you may stage and decorate your house if you want to sell it, or if you want to sell your car, you're probably going to vacuum it out and pull some of the dents out of the doors. There are things that you can do to prepare your business for sale. You want to get some of your documents in order, make sure your financials are cleaned up, and really prepare the thing to be marketed. The second step in selling your business is finding a buyer. And we've actually covered this in another video where we talk about the four most common ways to find a buyer for your business. Once you've found a potential buyer for your business, the third step in the process usually involves exchanging some information. We may call this due diligence. The buyers are going to want to see some basic information, like your financial statements or your corporate documents, or maybe a, a customer or an employee list. It's not a ton of information at this point, but it's a, at least enough for a potential buyer to, to decide if they want to continue forward with the transaction. You may have a buyer sign a non-disclosure agreement or an NDA as part of this process. And in fact, it's usually a pretty good idea to do that. Once you've provided that preliminary due diligence information to a potential buyer, we then get into the fourth step of the process, which is probably the hardest step, and that's agreeing on the material terms of your transaction. We call this the tentpole structure of the deal. Basically, what's the purchase price? How much money is the buyer willing to pay you? And what are the other major terms of this transaction? Is it going to be an asset sale or a stock sale, depending on the circumstances? Are they going to pay you in one lump sum up front, or are there going to be payments structured over time? But really, the big major material terms to the deal. This is the most difficult part because we're making some really big commitments at this point, especially from the buyer's perspective. But once we agree on that, then we can move on to the next step in the process. Once we've agreed on the material terms of the transaction, especially things like the purchase price, then we move on to the next step of the process. You may have what's called a letter of intent signed at this point. Good letters of intent are not legally binding contracts, but they at least let the buyer and seller know that we've reached an agreement on some of the terms and we'd like to proceed with the process. So sometimes the fifth step in the process is signing a letter of intent. And around that same time, we're also going to continue with due diligence. So before we agreed on the purchase price, we gave a little bit of information, but this is where the buyer's homework really gets started. We actually have a list of over 100 items that we request from potential sellers to review on the behalf of buyers. So this due diligence process can be really long and really drawn out depending on the complexity of your business and the complexity of the transaction. It's a way for a buyer to eliminate a lot of the risk. It really creates a headache for the sellers in a lot of circumstances, but it can really be a good way to put on a good show and show the strength of your business to maximize your sales price. At some point during the due diligence process, sometimes at the end, sometimes in the middle, that's when we actually go and we draft and negotiate the purchase agreement or the sales agreement, depending on what words are at the title of the contract. But this is your formal binding legal contract where the seller agrees to sell and the buyer agrees to buy. Once the buyer's done enough homework and they've done enough due diligence that they're confidence to confident to move forward with this transaction, that's when we negotiate, draft, and sign this document. And the document's going to include those material terms that we talked about earlier, but also some of the maybe less significant items, such as how long is the seller going to stick around after the transaction to help with the transition, or if there's going to be any earnout provision or a holdback of any of the sales proceeds. All of these are going to get negotiated as part of that agreement. Some of these contracts may be five pages, some of them can be hundreds of pages, depending on the complexity of the transaction, but most small businesses aren't dealing with those 500 page contracts on deals like this. Once we have the signed agreement in place, once there's a signed contract for the purchaser to buy the business from the seller, then we work towards closing. There's always a bunch of little loose ends to tie up and we dot our I's and cross our T's and we schedule a date where we're going to 
sign the rest of the paperwork, hand over the keys to the business, and hopefully the seller is going to put some cash into their pocket. So once the closing is scheduled after we sign the contract, we finish up this last round of paperwork, we sit down at the closing table, and we actually close the transaction. And then finally, there may be some sort of post-closing process involved. A lot of small businesses, the seller wants to stick around to make sure that they train the potential buyer. They want to make sure the transition is smooth for employees and customers and vendors. And in some circumstances, this process can be very long. Maybe if the seller isn't quite yet ready for retirement, for example, or sometimes it can be really compressed because maybe the business just isn't that complex and the new buyer is excited and ready to jump in and take things over. So that's a really high level overview of the process of selling your business. Of course, there's a lot more nuance uh, to each of these steps, and they change a little bit depending on the specific transaction that you may be involved in. But generally, that's how the process goes to go from being interested in selling your business to actually selling your business and putting the money in your pocket. So this was a really high level overview of the process of selling your business. If you'd like more information about any of these steps, especially about due diligence, we have a free resource available to you. Click the link here to get more information.